Hi, I'm Lily Diaz, your Connectivity Product Specialist here at E&M, and today I've got some questions for you about your liquid leak application. So if you clicked on this video, that means you probably have a liquid leak application lurking somewhere in your facility. Um, now, please let me know if any of these things sound familiar. You have a sensor there, but you're still having trouble detecting small amounts of liquid, so like droplets um, or anything like that, and you need to know if there's any liquid in the bottom of that. Um, second, are you using some sort of disposable um, capacitive sticker style sensor because your chemical or something in it is a little bit gross and you don't really want to you know, snap another one in there? or it corrodes the other sensors. And if you are using a reusable or non-reusable disposable sensor, does it have an amplifier? Do you spend half of your life figuring out how to um, get it tweaked just right so it detects your liquid and nothing else, and it doesn't have any problems, but you still can't detect that small droplet of liquid? Well, if any of those things sound familiar or you struggled with any of those things, I know I've had some um, customers have some problems. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my new little friend. Um, this little guy here, he's pretty tiny. Can you see him? Um, he is the HPQ-D series from Asbel, um, which was formerly Yamataki, just to keep everyone in the loop. Um, so this little guy right here detects almost all liquids. Um, there's a handful of ones that he won't do, things like oil, blood, uh, some flammable stuff, and of course, uh, chocolate. This little guy sadly has never tasted chocolate. But you know, it's okay. Um, he uses uh, the refractive index of the liquid, um, so the less refractive or the less refractive it is, the lower the refractive index, the harder it is for this guy to see. So chocolate, not super refractive, hard to see. Oh, wow. um, so the HPQD is also completely reusable. Um, no tuning, no nothing with this guy. So you can get rid of all of your tuning instruments and everything else. Um, I'll actually show you, he's here, and this is my power supply, and that's all, all I'm using right now. So, you know, very simple. Um, he also has an integrated um, amplifier in there. It's crazy, 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 crazy. So you don't have to do anything to this. Um, no hassling with it, no dealing with setting it just right to, test, to see your liquid specifically. Um, he also does come in both a normally closed and normally open configuration, and both of those configurations also come with a PNP or NPN configuration. Um, so it does also come, you can buy a little clip mount for this guy. Mine's managed to scurry away somewhere in my office, so I'm not really sure where he went. Um, but it's a little clip to clip him into the base of your panel, the base of whatever it might be that you guys need to put him in. So now that I've talked to you a little bit about um, the HPQ-D, let me show you how he works. As you can see, the sensing head of the HPQ-D is relatively small. It's roughly the size of this nickel here, and that's just there for your size comparison. Um, and you might be able to see this from here, but you can actually see that this cable is overmolded into the housing of the unit. The housing and this overmold is PFA material, so it's gonna help protect the sensor and the cable um, from some of the nastier chemicals and other nasty stuff that this might come in contact with. Um, so I'm gonna remove my nickel here. I uh, gotta save that for parking later. Um, I have a nice laminated surface here and I do have a little dropper here full of blue colored um, water and just to make it easy for y'all to see. Um, so I'm gonna drop just a drop of water here on my surface and then I'm gonna set this guy right on top. Um, 
let it find it. See, it's a relatively small amount of water, but that LED still clicked over to that um, amber, meaning it's found something. Uh, now, before I pick it up to reset it, I just want to let you guys know that this sensor is only IP67, so it's not meant to withstand high pressure, high temperature, any of those kinds of washed down environments, much more um, in enclosed space um, where it's just looking for the leak. Um, so now we're going to clean it all up. Um, it makes it really easy. Um, all you have to do is lift this up. You can already see that the LEDs changed back. It's reset itself. There's a little bit of liquid on the bottom, but not much. So all you need to do, clean up your sensor, make sure it's really clean and dry, and then clean up your surface, and then set it right back down in the spot where your clip is. Sadly, as I mentioned before, I don't have a clip with this little guy here. Um, otherwise, I'd show you how it clips into place. But it's practically magic. Um, it automatically resets itself, and it detects even the smallest bit of water. Oop, there we go. Tinier piece there. See if it finds it. There it goes. So really simple. No more replacing, no more rewiring, no more dealing with amplifiers, no more need for absorbent sheets, no more need for anything like that. All you need is this little HPQD. Um, if you'd like more information on this product or have any questions regarding what you've seen in this video, please feel free to contact me at your email at the email on the screen. Um, once again, I'm Lily Diaz, your connectivity product specialist, signing off.